Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to GamesCon 2012 and to the ESL CM Storm Arena. It's time for the lower bracket final in the World of Warcraft European Invitational. Without further ado, let's get the teams out here. First, a big round of applause for Microsity.be. Okay, they've battled their way through the lower bracket and they'll be taking on Imminent Tomb! Okay, we now have the two teams in the lower bracket. Let me just explain to you what this means to these two teams. The loser goes home in fourth place and no one likes to finish outside the top three of these events. The winner will go through to the lower bracket consolation final where they'll get a chance to go back into the upper bracket to the grand finals. So this is a massive match right now for the top three places in this European Invitational. As they are, he's now going to take us through the two teams, interview them both and find out just what they might have in store for each other. All right, man, well, I am ready. We have Kuna, we have Barbaros once again, uh, two kind of mainstays here on stage. You guys have been up here quite a bit. You know, you're in the lower bracket, you're still in it, but obviously, you know, not where you hoped you would be. I'm sure everyone is hoping they'd be in the position that Yas presents is in. Um, but I mean, Barbaros, are you still confident? Do you think you can take down their RLS? Uh, I'm confident we have a good shot, yes. I feel like on live, it's very, very difficult to match up, but on the TR, I feel it's quite, quite balanced. So I feel the team that plays better is going to win this time. Okay, so I mean, uh, do you think that you guys have like what do you think it, it just comes down to more in maps do you think that it's just like you guys kind of have to get through the bad maps for you and just just be alive until ring of valor or something like that uh maps are really bad uh, maps are very important and a big factor but ring of valor is actually very good for them it's awful for us so it's not always what you think is going to be a good map or not but maps are important but it's not the sole decider okay well interesting I mean, um, for you, what is what is the biggest thing that you have to do right in this? Is it managing your defensive cooldowns when you're being pressured? Is it staying offensive? What is it that you have to do right to win this series? Uh, I think the hardest thing for me is getting the right balance between defensive and defensive play. If you if you play too defensive, then they get too far ahead. But if you play overly offensive, you'll get caught in a bad situation and just go down. So it's getting the right balance right, which is most important in the matchup. All right. Well, any prediction on the final score? Uh, I think it'll be 3-2 either way. All right, well, good luck, Barbaros. Good luck to Eminent Tomb. Round of applause for them. And we are going to do a quick interview here with Kuna. Uh, still a player, you know, man of the hour still, it's fair to say. I think that, that the series, last series you guys had was really exciting. Uh, you know, can you build off that? Can you get some momentum from that going into this team? Uh, you know, Barbaros was saying he thinks it's a very even matchup. The better team will win. Uh, do you agree? Yeah, I do. Um... I think we have a good chance at winning now. I really want to go to China with my friends. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do my best. Um, we can beat KFC on TR. This is beatable even if we can get give way more than on live. You know? so, yeah. Okay. Well, obviously, you know your goal. You want to win the whole thing, but top two is the most important, right? So I mean. Uh, you know, if you win here, you're going to have to go up against that double Shaman Warlock. You know, we already saw them beat another RLS. Do you think you can do anything different against that? I think we can beat them. We have to basically try to survive and use their mistakes. As soon as they do one mistake, we have to use it and try to kill the announcement Shaman. It's going to be our best target. Okay, so what is the most important thing for you in, in this matchup against KFC? Uh, what is it that your team has to do right to, to win? We have to be prepared for the CC before they come. We have to don't go too offensive if we don't have defensive cooldown ready. We have to make good swaps with raw sacrifice. We, we have to do a lot of things, but they have to do two to win. It's not that easy for them either. It's like if we do one big mistake, we lose instantly. Okay, so prediction for the final score? 3-0. Three 3-0, -oh. Three -oh, oh wow, okay. Cocky as always, Kuna. We'll see if you can pack it up. Uh, I'm gonna throw it over to Red Eye. I'm gonna head over to the commentary booth, guys, and we'll get ready for this match. Thank you very much, Isaiah. We'll let him uh, dash over to the commentary box where he'll join his uh, comrade, Conrad. Uh, they've done a fantastic job for us today, by the way, so make a lot of noise when the commentators come back up. This is the lower bracket final of the World of Warcraft European Invitational. Thank you for joining us wherever you are all around the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, 
and hopefully not good night just yet because we have a lot of action still to come this is a biggie it's the lower bracket final and here to bring all the action for you is Azael and Conrad hey guys thanks for tuning in thanks for watching I have to say every single time Kun is interviewed I just have a big smile on my <laughs> face you know you, you see him it's a serious interview and it's like so so how do you think that it'll go and he just get, cracks a smile and goes 3-0. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love the confidence, man. You know, you gotta, you gotta think that you can do it. You have to be confident. You know, you know, it's it's cool to say it's a close match or anything like that. You can you can say what you want, but I feel that you don't you don't have to maybe say it, but you have to believe it at least. Oh yeah, for sure. And that does mean that Imminent Tomb already fought another RLS and won. So, uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, let me let me double check on that. Uh, yeah, they did. So they already fought an RLS. They won. So it, that means that yeah. they're currently warmed up. To fight in RLS, and that is huge. You know, to be warmed up against that specific setup is definitely the position that you want to be in. Yeah, I have to agree. But at the same time, we saw some pretty insane games from Kuna's last series. You know, going up against three DPS, like going up against Red DK Priest, where they have to manage uh, their defensive cooldowns perfectly. And it's like against that, I, I feel that that really does kind of prepare them for KFC. Is just as far as you know, they know they have to use their cooldowns perfectly. He said, you know, if one big mistake in their defensive cooldowns, then they'll just lose. Yeah. For sure, and I, I'm sorry about earlier. I will never count Kuna out again. Kuna, Flubber, or Skens, as there are such all-star players. You made me look bad in front of them. <laughs> You're like, you know, Conrad said that you were going to lose 3-0, and yeah, then you yeah. won. I like, might have thrown you under the bus a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. I may or may not be used to that through the, all the tournaments we do, but, yeah, I... I'm very happy to see these guys play. One of the advantages. I mean, I have to get something out of running back and forth the stage all the time. <laughs> I, mean, I have to get some enjoyment out of it. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you guys, that for those of you that don't know, Azale's currently sprinting back and forth for every single interview he has to do, and it's so hot. And he's not even breaking a sweat. And, that, and that's because he's an all-star. Thanks, John, man. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we are here live at Cologne. Uh, sorry, in Cologne at Gamescom. Uh, for the European Invitational Finals, if you're just now tuning in, the way this worked, uh, we invited eight captains, you know, eight captains of teams, allowed them to pick whatever setup they wanted to do. And, and basically, it's like, you know, they, they invite, say, Kun is the captain, then he picks Skens and Flaba as his teammates. Uh, and so we ended up with eight of the very best teams from Europe. We're now down to the final four. Whoever wins here will be guaranteed uh, not only a place in the top three, but they'll still be alive for that trip to China, which is really uh, the important thing to me. You know, top three, nice, but uh, if you finish third, you're going to be disappointed. Well, if you think about it, just think of how much a trip to China is worth. I mean, let's, let's be real here, man. The trip may have a price tag on it, but those memories, can, can you put a price tag on memories? Yes. No, okay. $75,000, first place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's how much it is. I guess that's fair to say. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, every, everyone wants to go to China. Every single yeah. player that attended this event, that's the main thing that they were looking forward to because it does mean more money, more shot at money, and, uh, you know. And I mean, let's be honest. They're all competitors. They all want to win, man. And here we go. We're going to be moving on into this game. We have, uh, okay, wait. Are they playing something different? Yeah, they are. They're playing. What? No, we're, oh. we're watching oh, Flubba, okay. man. Oh, okay. This I, was, is I was all confused. We're watching Flubba. We haven't gotten to do this just yet, and this should actually be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to watch uh, his point of view, uh, and it is going to be, uh, you know, this RLS going up against the KFC. Uh, this should be pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I love watching Flubba play. I watch his stream all the time, and that's because he's such an all-star. And uh, he's currently just stacking his heels onto Skens. There's a Riptide and an Earth Shield on him. They think it's the, he's going to be taking most of the damage at the start. Yeah, and he wants to get that Ancestral Vigor stacked up as much as possible, you know, give his Warlock that extra HP, allow him to hopefully sit through you know, more of those CCs, because there is so much instant CC coming out of this team, and you know, he can get charge into a throwdown, into a scatter, into a silence, into a trap, into a hex, etc. And here comes Barbarous. He's going to throw down onto uh, that walk immediately. Silencing shot overlapping, unfortunately, on that throwdown. A uh, bit of a waste there. Uh, but Kuna, you know, getting a full a full uh, cheap shot right at the same time. So a really good start, I have to say, from this RLS. A UATA spell is caught, uh, which was reflected. He's going to be scattered at the same time. Uh, doing a really good job is Flubba, though. And there's the bomb going down. Barbarous going to be taking quite a bit of damage. He's going for the G heal. Will top off his Warlock. Now going to be trying to get a hex onto Glyptic, but he gets shocked. Nice job there by Glyptic. Brain Deadly at the same time at about 10% HP. Going to have to deterrence. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble still, man. They, they need to catch up, but they're going to swap over onto Barbarous. But Brain Deadly looks like he may just go down. That was a feigned death. Brain Deadly is at 10% or so. Barbarous low as well. I think they might just need to link and use every single defensive. Because I, they, they have to, man. He has to catch up. He's just so far behind. I can't believe he's not going for the link just yet. This is so ballsy. Uh, and, and does it go down? It, it still hasn't, man.
man. And I feel like this is ridiculous. He has to do it. And, uh, there's just, he's not. <laughs> he has the biggest balls. He dispels another UA, goes. and there goes the link. But look at how far behind they are. Everybody at about 45% HP. Everyone on the RLS is completely topped. Another UA dispel. Glyptic even going to use first aid on himself. Artie, yeah. that is Kuna he, on the rogue trying to kite back. And Kuna is actually going to be forced to use another bomb there a little bit defensively. Barbara's hopped out of it immediately. Uh, so that is one thing going for this KSC. There shouldn't be any bombs more remaining, I don't think. Uh, there's a silencing shot on that G heal. Kuna is going to be dipping uh, relatively low here. I'm not sure if he has combat readiness, but the swap comes in onto Skens, who is in Fell Armor, will be taking a lot of damage. And in the meantime, Glyphic has topped up his team. There's the Hex onto Kuna. It's a, removed immediately by Flubba, but he's going to be monkey stunned, full trap, and Skens could be in some trouble here. He has to port out of there. Uh, they may just swap now hard onto the rogue. And it looks like that's exactly what they want to do. Yeah, nice job, though, to port back, to know you have to port. They need to get more pressure going. They forced so many cooldowns out of this KFC that if they can get anything going at this point, it's going to be so good for them. I wish they still had that bomb remaining. Maybe a slight mistake to use it earlier. A soul swap goes in onto Brain Deadly, I believe. Oh, and so. the rock's thrown down with no pet. If he can not get this summon off, that would be huge. Do they have a silencing shot or anything? No, silencing shot is used onto uh, Flubba instead. Uh, that could have been pretty dangerous, uh, but he does get that pet out. He gets the soul. Here's the monkey stun trap once again, and Skans is on his port, so he can't port out of there, and Flub is going to be forced to trinket. He trinkets into a scatter, and Skens has to tap. He taps. He's down below 40% HP. A healing surge coming in. Will it land? It does, and that may be enough to avoid using the link. Uh, we can see that Kuna at the same time was disarmed there, but I think he's going to have to link. Now he does. Yeah, and Imp Hellstone used at the same time. That is a soul burn, but look at how much damage Proxy has. Demon Soul, Eradication, but Brain Deadly is at 1% health. Will he end up falling? Look at see Flubba going for the Hex oh, onto the Shaman. The Shock was missed, and Brain Deadly, can he survive? He's at about 5% HP. He's trying to stay away here. The Soul Drain's coming in. Brain Deadly is just doing everything he can. Uh, there's a, another pummel onto that Soul Drain. Nice job, Heroic, leaping over there by Barbarous, but Glyptic is so far behind. He has to top off his Hunter. Uh, there's just nothing left uh, in the tank here for Brain Deadly. He has nothing left to get away. Rexus has been popped by Barbarous, but he's going to be Earthbound. Nice Earthbind there uh, by Flubba, and Brain Deadly does fall to Kuna in the background. The RLS going to take game one, I have to say. To me, it all came down to the opener. The opener, everything went wrong. I yeah. mean, throw down at the same time as Silencing Shot on the Warlock, you know. Uh, I'm not sure if that was an accident or if he meant to Silencing Shot. Flubba instead could be that. Uh, also, you know, the throwdown was kind of wasted because he got Sheep Shot at the same time, uh, and then there was like you know, a scattered trap that was just eaten and nothing really went right for the KFC off the bat. Uh, they used some pretty important offensive cooldowns, Deadly Calm, etc., and really weren't able to get anything in return for it. Uh, the RLS was able to not use any trinkets, not use really any cooldowns, uh, and be fine. And it's honestly the scariest part against KFC is usually that over. You just have to shut it down, and then you can go offensive, and that's exactly what they were able to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm always so impressed when I see the RLS's play that just immediately get pressure. You know, when... When I play RLS, and this is probably my own fault, is I play the Warlock, and I'm very slow at getting the damage going. You know, I, I juke the, the shocks, and then I try and get a big soul swap with a demon soul and all that. But when I see Warlocks like Skens, and another Warlock I notice that does this immediately too is Benny's. They just immediately have all this pressure going, running that RLS setup. They just have yeah. full dots, and they just do so much pressure with it from the get-go. And I think that's really the best way to play RLS. So... I don't know about you guys that play lock at home, but I'm certainly going to take that, take notes, and go home and better myself as a player because of it. Yeah, that's the, that's the way to do it, man. You always got to be keeping improving if you want to ever, you know, get to that kind of really high level that these players are at. You have to think, you know, what could I have done better in every single game? You can't just be like, oh, you know, it was, it was my teammate's fault, it was his fault, it was whatever. Even if your teammate made a major mistake, there could have been something you could have done to allow them to get away with that mistake. Um, and I mean, we are going to be getting going into this game here very shortly. It's a 1-0 lead for this RLS. Uh, we have, you know, the, we have, oh, what is, just being honest, is waiting for them in the Constellation Finals. And, and that team will be facing off against whoever wins here uh, and going on to China. So uh, we will see what exactly is going to be happening. We're falling Flubba out once again. The gates have opened here on Dalaran Arena. Let's give them a round of applause uh, for these two teams. Yeah, and I love Flubba's UI, by the way. It's set up perfectly to see everything going on. You can see the arena frames on the right and his teammates on the left, and he even has a bigger shock, tremor, and hex. But right off the bat, it doesn't look like there was any sap available for Kuna. Yeah, they're, they're actually going to hit Kuna. Yeah, I think Kuna actually got popped out, man. 
Uh, and it's a bit of a rough start now for the RLS. KFC, you know, kind of getting the early advantage this time. There's a silencing shot on the UA there. Uh, onto that Warlock, onto Skens. Flubba, you know, is just kind of sitting back right now. He's throwing out some heals onto Kuna. But Kuna is actually going to have to pop his shield wall immediately uh, because he's being focused hard here. Uh, the trap looks like it's going to be eaten. Actually, no, it's just a frost trap. Uh, we see that Skens is going to pour out immediately. You know, as soon as combat readiness is for, is, is falls, though, they can just go right to Kuna. Yeah, this this is a really good start for the KFC for sure. But look at Brain Deadly's health. He's already down to 40%, but at the same time, you can see that Skens is low on health. He has to use his Imp Hellstone. That means he will not have that available unless he summons and, and yet another. No, he can't port. He has to stay in LOS of his Shaman, and he's taking so much damage, and the uh, Imp's Hellstone expires. So maybe we're going to have to see a link. A defensive bomb did go down there, uh, but that is kind of a rough start. And now Spearwalker's Grace being used. He will be topped off there by Flubba, but they could go back to Kuna, who does not have combat readiness, and he is going to be swapped over onto. Our shield's already up by Flubba, knowing that that damage is going to be coming in. He lands the G heal, uh, but he does get silencing shot on that next one, and Kuna is dipping so low. Will Link be forced here? I don't know. G heal going to come out. If that gets, it gets Monkey stunned on it, and he's going to get trapped. Uh, is he going to have to trinket the trap Does lands? He trinkets that immediately. If he gets interrupted again, he will have to Link, but he does not. And Barbara's now being pressured very hard. The smoke bomb goes down. Coil off that cheap shot, uh, and he is taking a lot of damage. And a full hex on the Glyptic. Really nice job. He, he gets feared on his NS. He got trinketed that into a full fear immediately, and the NS actually didn't do much at all. A Drain Soul goes in. A Spirit Link is forced to draw up, and they, they have really great pressure. This RLS is just so good at getting the pressure going every single yeah, time. There's another silencing shot, though, on that heal from Flubba. Uh, we can see Skens had his haunt reflected by Barbaros. Nice job of him reducing uh, all that dot damage by so, so much. It's really important uh, to land those. Uh, there's a Ren up on Flubba now. Maybe they want to go him. Uh, it could be dangerous if they don't, though, because that can break all the scatters, the traps, the monkey stuns, etc. So you have to be careful with that. It looks like the target will be brain deadly for now. Glyptic has pretty much topped off his team, uh, but they're actually going to be doing a lot of damage to brain deadly here. He does have to turns once again. I think that is his final one. Yeah, and a really nice job by Flubba. He gets in there in case a trap comes, but look at Kuna's health. He's already dipping down to about 45% health. He may be in some trouble. Earth Shield's about to expire. Combat readiness is stacked full, and it has about 15 seconds remaining. They're going to swap over onto Flubba. Flubba taking a lot of damage. His Nature Swiftness is available, as is his Spirit Link, I believe, but uh, now they're going to swap over onto Skens, but Barbarous' health, he's at about 40%. He's taking so much damage. He has to go defensive, and just healing search after healing search being pumped out by Glyptic. Eventually Eventually he will run Oom, um, and Dalaran is so tough for a KFC to actually get, score a kill on. Yeah, it is, and I mean, both shamans are pretty even on mana, but there's a big drink being got by Glyptic, and that could be huge mana. You can see that the mana is just kind of flying up. He's up to about 60% mana, which is very big. He throws up the Unleashed Elements. Uh, Kuna is just trying to kite back here, trying to do the best that he can. And we saw that uh, Flubba actually just got pummeled off pummel there. And do they have another earn up for this? Does not look like they do. A big heal does land, and Barbaros is in some trouble here. We have to remember Link is not available, neither is Shield Wall, and Barbaros might just go down because Glyptic is drinking way too long. There's the Hex put onto Glyptic. Coil uh, overlapped as well, but does it matter? No, Barbaros falls and the RLS is going to put it to match point. Such an excellent job. We saw Flubba go in for a run cast hex. There, I believe it was a blanket spell lock on the Glyptic. That means he cannot shock it. Um, maybe they communicated that there was no ground to, grounding mm. totem available, available either. So just Flubba. I mean, I've said it before. I'll say it countless times. I don't care, man. Flubba is just an all-star at Resto Shaman. Yeah, I mean, uh, although both teams seem to think it was a very close matchup, we saw, you know, no Link Force, no NS Force. Uh, I think that Flubba did trinket. He did, you know, he did trinket the trap, but that's about it. He had pretty much everything. He had good mana. Um, you know, Glyptic got that drink off, but unfortunately for him, it little put him a little bit behind, and then he, he came back out, he got CC, he didn't have the trinket available, and he wasn't able to really uh, catch his team back up, so you know, maybe a mistake going for that drink at that time, but it's understandable because, you know, we were both kind of thinking it might have been a mana war. Yeah, well, there are three options you have when the other shaman is drinking, or the other healer, rather. The first option is to go stand him up, and, uh, you know, maybe you send your pet, or you just have a rope distract, something like that. Rain the of fire or whatever, yeah. Yeah, the second option is to do enough pressure to force him to come back out and yeah. maybe put him behind. And the third option is to lose because you let him get too much mana <laughs> back, you big noob. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that the second option can be good, but you have to be sure you're going to get that pressure going because if, yeah. you, if you commit to going for the, for the damage, if you're just like, okay, just forget it, don't stand him up, just put out damage, uh, force him back, and we'll get him to stand up that way. If you do that and you don't put out the damage, you don't get him to stand up, then he gets so much mana back, you get no pressure, and everything goes horribly wrong. So you have to be sure that you can get that damage out on onto the warrior, and they were sure that they could, so they just you know put the damage into into Barbarous, rather, uh, got him quite low. Glyptic did get the mana back, but he wasn't able to 
matter. You know, it, did, it didn't affect anything. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you put all your interrupts into the Shaman and you hit the Rogue, is that the Warlock's just able to free cast those haunts, and that allows Shadows Embrace to stack, which is such a huge factor. And that's when you know you're going to do enough pressure, is when you have a three stack of Shadows Embrace. But here we go, guys. It be, very well may be the last game for Brain Deadly, Glyptic, and Barbarous. They need a comeback train in order to stay in this tournament. I'm rooting oh, for them as the much as I Full sap onto Glyptic. Uh, Kuna did not get popped down. They should get a really good opener here as a result, uh, but not able to really take advantage of that sap actually didn't get any dots up, didn't get any opener at all. Uh, and they're going to start just on skins. Yeah, wow. Oh Kuna's actually taking so much damage. He has to catch a Gift of the Naru, Riptide, and Earth Shield on him. So just so many uh, hots that you don't have to cast for. But nonetheless, Blubba is trying to run while cast some heals onto skins. He got interrupted there. An Imp Hellstone came out. Demon's armor and the is available. Then, and the Hellstone buff's about to expire, man. He, he ports back there just in time. The Hellstone buff does uh, expire, and that scatter came in a millisecond too late. Uh, otherwise, that G heal would not have landed in the walk. Might have just died. But they're going to swap hard onto Flubba, who's taking a lot of damage immediately. He throws down the Stone Claw and the Earth Shield. Uh, he's trying to just keep himself topped off here. He needs to cut away because he is taking a ton of damage at about 50%. A Barbarous Blade storming after him. Uh, probably should cancel to try to pummel that, but he does not. Uh, he saw that the Shaman was full anyway. They're just going to swap back onto the Warlock, who is kiting away, is going to be able to get a good port off here. Yeah, but not too much pressure has come out from this RLS. Maybe this is what they need right here. Brain Deadly already down to about 80% health. So they can get something going for sure. Glyptic doing decently on mana. And actually, oh my goodness, Flubba has the wrong trinket on and he just fixed that. That was actually pretty crucial. So nice job, Flubba. Some in-game uh, adaptability. Yeah, it's important that he noticed that. If he didn't, uh, you know, sitting in full trap with the wrong team means you just lose. And here comes the burst onto Skens. He does not have the Impel Stone, remember, but he is going to pour it out of there. It looks like he's just fine. The uh, Earth Shield's about to expire, but he will uh, reapply it onto uh, Kuna, I think. Kuna going to pop that shield wall very early here. Silencing Shot does come in onto Flubba, and Flubba, you know, needs to get over there, get those uh, hots rolling. He does get the Riptide up on Kuna, who is going to be popping his dance onto Barbarous here. The Smoke Bomb goes down. Uh, Hex was trying to come out defensively from Glyptic, but he's unable to get it. He gets in there, but Barbarous is just going to die. No Link, no NS, able to come out from Glyptic, a quick 3-0 there is going to put the RLS and MicroCity.be into the consolation finals against Just Be Honest. Uh, you know, a disappointing finish there for uh, Brain Deadly, Barbarous, and Glyptic, but still, you know, finishing top four, an impressive finish, you know, top half of the tournament, pretty solid, you know, with, with a setup that many players might not have expected to do that well. Uh, so they showed us some good games, but has to be a frustrating win to frustrating way to end your tournament experience. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, there are a few factors against them right now. Glyptic is very ill. So, yeah. you know, when, like they said, it's a pretty even matchup usually. So for, for Glyptic to be feeling ill going into that, that's rough. And yeah. I know they're, they're all a little bit rusty as well. But nonetheless, they provided absolutely amazing games for us. And I'm, I'm a big fan of them now. I'm for, for sure going to check out all their streams, YouTube, yeah. and whatnot. And you guys should too. But for them, let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Brain Deadly, Glyptic, and uh, Barbarous. Yeah, some very well played games uh, throughout the series. So we're going to throw it over to Red Eye, who has the teams at the stage. Thank you very much. Uh, once more, another fantastic game in World of Warcraft. It is proving to be a fantastic set of matches all day long. Almost a whitewash in the end, but Microsity, my goodness, they've come through that lower bracket like a steam train and uh, have claimed their place in what will be now the consolation final where they'll have a chance to face off against uh, it was uh, just being honest earlier on who lost in the upper bracket final so they'll now play each other in the consolation final and the winner of that will then go into the grand final it also means the next match is also a huge game because the winner will claim that final place in shanghai for the global finals at the end of the year so let's get the thoughts of the winners of that third fourth place game it is microsity all right, guys, so here with me is Kuna. And man, you said you were in a 3-0. You did it. I mean, you're both saying you thought it was going to be a pretty even match. But I have to say, looking pretty one-sided there. Yeah, it's well, we played really good. I'm really glad of my team, except last game, a bit of miscommunication. But overall, we played really good. So I'm happy it went as I expected. Yeah, so I mean, you guys are now in the Constellation Finals, one series away from being able to, to go to China. Uh, I mean, you said you were confident going up against this next team. Uh, do you still feel that? You know, do you still feel really good? Yeah, I do. I really want to go China still, and I will, no matter what. All right, man. Well, congratulations. You guys are going to be guaranteed a top three finish. Well played series there by Kuna. Well played series by your entire team. And uh, we're going to throw it back to Red Eye, and we're going to be getting this next series going for you very shortly.
Yes, thank you very much, uh, Azel. And of course, they are through to that lower bracket uh, consolation final, of course. It's not a consolidation final, so don't give me grief on Twitter. I know what you like. Uh, it is the consolation final, of course. So we're down to three teams left now, and that $12,000 doesn't seem too far away. Don't go too far away either, because we have that consolation final coming up very soon at 25 past, which I make that about 15 minutes from now. So local time, 25 past five, and I'm not doing the maths on the geography again. It's boring. We'll see you very soon. To ask why we fight is to ask why believe.